You know, all of those three quick video clips really captures for me the essence of inexperience very visually on, um, in commercials. And the first being in 1997, that MasterCard commercial, where again, they're talking about our industry creating some exceptional thing in someone's life. And oh yeah, by the way, it all happened because of the credit card. But it didn't, it really happened because people were engaged in our business. So when I think about marketing our industry versus any other industry, I think we have the, the lucky advantage or the fortunate situation that we always and should be marketing an experience. And we uniquely have experiences that people adore. But do we deliver them in that way that people adore them? So those first few clips help me remember that every day in our industry, we have the opportunity to create experiences for the people we serve. And again, always remember the people we serve are our employees, our guests, our volunteers, our donors, our sponsors, our board, every stakeholder group that we have in our organizations. So in this chapter, this whole idea of experience, I hope those first few videos helped you capture. We deliver a lot of services, but how many times do we really engage with a HTM type provider that delivers back to us an experience, something that exceeds our expectations as we'll learn in chapter three and something that makes a difference. So in chapter two, we really just kind of introduce this concept of experience. We know it's the 21st century mode of what we do. It's not a product, it's not a service, it's an experience. So everyone in our organization should be engaged with the idea that we no longer just provide things, we change people, we enhance their lives, we do things based on our respective organizations, we do something different than just give them something. So what I love about a 2003 definition of an experience is that Gilmore once said that today's consumer increasingly desire neither goods nor services, but sensation-filled experiences that engage them in personal and memorable ways. And I think that's what we need to remember throughout this semester is we're not just delivering like so many people do in our industry. We are trying to deliver something that's uniquely different, which in turn will give us a competitive advantage, which in turn makes it incredibly easier to market if we have something unique and special in that regard. So throughout this chapter, there are several kind of theories or concepts that relate to an experience and how people are motivated and what gets them excited and how, how do we reach them in that personal and memorable way. Well, we know that people are motivated and, and uh, for their own reasons, not our reasons. And so that starts to engage in this chapter, the whole concept that we have to reach out to the consumer to find out, or the volunteer or the employee, to find out really what they want what they need and then we have a choice as an organization to choose to deliver it in a really high quality way chapter three or we choose to not and deliver things like we want to versus what the the people we want to serve are really saying to us so gilmore said this it still holds true and we're still not there as an organization and i think you found that too already in your first task of trying to understand how our organizations approach marketing so in in our chapter we talk about um, really that fourth level of what's next. That was a, a task for you last week to think about history and kind of where we're going. And what was interesting about reading what you said um, is that it's kind of hard to predict. It's really hard. We're just kind of doing a little play on words more than not. We have gone from a product to a service to an experience generation um, in terms of what we deliver. And we know not all our organizations are there. We're probably stuck in the services mode. Handful are up in experiences. But when we start to predict what we should be looking at in 2020, it gets incredibly difficult, or what we should be delivering in 2020, um, because we're not quite to the experience portion yet. You know, more and more we see organizations doing things like Disney's delivery of luggage all the way to your room from the time you check in to an airport no matter where you're traveling from. So I'm coming from California, I'm going to Walt Disney World in Florida, and I will not see my bag until it arrives in my guest room and I have access to it. I don't have to go to a baggage claim, I don't have to cart it in a taxi or a 
transportation or my rental car and move it all in, they will take it from that point of origin to the place of my destination, the very specific place, my guest room. It's that kind of looking or evaluation of how we deliver what we deliver and making that a seamless experience for a guest and overcoming all of those obstacles that make uh, us just a service or just a product even and makes it something um, worthy um, of interest and um, really delivers what we're trying to do. So as we look at this, we know that an experience is consumer oriented. They are defining it, uh, they are evaluating it. You know, it's a very personal, memorable, we hope in a positive way, again, and it can't, it's, again, it's an intangible. It's just how they leave, you know, what they feel like, how it's enriched them, we hope, how they, how they maybe act or believe or um, treat others differently. All of those things um, exist, but there's nothing in their hand. And we know that these experiences are created simultaneously by both of us, right? We have to listen and learn, and we have to design and deliver. And then we've got to ask them how we did. So we know this new cycle of business development, really, of how we operate as an organization may not be where you are at. It may not be where the organizations you work or intern for are at. But we know we have to move our field forward and get to that place. So more importantly, again, we go, what's next? You know, is it is it the simultaneous exchange? And again, looking back at your responses, um, it was kind of a spin on an experience. Well, it's a more valued experience. It's a more, and I think that's, we don't have an answer, but we need to start predicting. And as we look forward in this chapter, there are several historical theories and frameworks that help us maybe move to what's next. There's concept in this chapter related to the concept of flow and looking at all the variables that impact these incredibly meaningful personal experiences um, is flow the next kind of phase but we know all experiences aren't designed because they won't have all the elements to be uh, oriented like a flow concept but there is one concept that I'll talk about in the chapter three notes instead of chapter two although it's introduced here in chapter two about these five phases of an experience so maybe the next in experiences is really this multi-leveled multifaceted experience across five phases. So for me, there are several things in this chapter that I just really embrace, that I really feel as an industry we have not yet embraced, and yet it's all at our fingertips. Hence the reason this is chapter two in our book. We set the stage in chapter one of what marketing is in HTM or is not. Chapter two, we set the stage on maybe what it should be to get us to that experience and beyond level. In chapter three, we talk about the delivery of that experience. So these first three chapters, if you haven't yet noticed, engage the entire organization. This isn't about the marketing person's role as one person in an organization. This is about every employee, every volunteer, every donor, every manager, operations or non-operations oriented in our front of the house or back of the house, it doesn't matter. It's an attitude, it's a value, it's a culture, and it's a different delivery mechanism that maybe m many of us haven't, haven't been in. So as we look at this table, I want you to continue to think about what is next, where are we at, what are the gaps to getting there. So the difference of how that experience language feels in a collateral piece might be currently very feature oriented. We'll talk in marketing often about features and benefits that people buy, not what you do, but again, as our author indicated um, in our TEDx, why you do it, right? It's not what it is, it's how it impacts them. So this mom and me, a 45 minute session that meets twice a week for, you, for people to play together and be with others. That is a feature oriented collateral announcement that was in a brochure for an actual rec center. If they were benefit oriented, They'd be saying something like, children play and grow while a parent learns activities appropriate to the developmental needs of this group. And added bonus, parent and child make new friends. It becomes more oriented to the things they seek out of the experience. 
So instead of being, this is what they do. Two kids play together, time off, mom. <laughs> you know, they can engage. Um, when they learn and grow, because the parent is concerned about are the developmental needs of my child being met? Do they get to learn to socialize? Do they get to learn new things for their development? And uh, do I get to interact with them doing that? You know, do I get to learn to play with my child better? So benefit oriented versus feature oriented. We often in our industry sell benefits. No, we don't. We sell features. <laughs> we sell things. Here's our Olympic size swimming pool. Here's our 500 guest rooms. Here's our 50,000 feet of ballroom space, right? Meeting space. Here's our conference table and our chairs. Here's our um, fine dining restaurant. Um, we sell things. We don't sell why those things might matter to our, the people that we serve. Describing the why might be, hey, we want to be the reason why you have a great relationship with your children and watch them develop. That's what we want to do, right? Our why gets communicated in that next level. And maybe again, that's the next level of marketing. Not so much experience, but multifaceted experience clearly articulating an organization's why so people can see and do that. A 45-minute session meets twice a week, provides a chance for them to play together with others, but we clearly describe why we're doing and why we're in this business. Further, we can see the differences between features and benefits in this table in the um, chapter as well, but I just wanted to highlight it because again, it shows if you look at collateral in any one of these type organizations in our industry, you would see a description of features. We have 15 lanes in a pro shop and a bar restaurant and we do fall and winter and summer leagues. We have free champagne, um, flowers, free breakfast in our romantic getaway weekend event, a free buggy ride, etc. At our fitness center, we have cardiovascular equipment, we have personalized trainers, you know, we have those kinds of things. And maybe it's a religious youth camp that we have a, a games and activities, quality, qualified facilitator, the dining hall, etc. We need to move into this benefit mode. Why do people go bowling? What's important to them? Well, we know across different groups of people, those interests may be very different. So hence, it also starts to tell us we're going to have to learn about what people want and we're going to have to start putting them into groups of like interests. It's not one big large group we serve. We know that. We started targeting, right, in the 80s or at least segmenting in the 80s and targeting in the 21st century. Now we have to move to incredibly personalized. So we're going to have to really get into groups of people. So they might be looking for fun. They might be looking for quality family time. You know. Personally, I feel that bowling is one of those incredible activities because it's multi-generational. So now our family time can be across generations and we can all equally participate, a grandparent, a parent, a child, you know, in that kind of activity. The Valentine's Day weekend, my benefit might be rekindling a relationship, um, intimacy, communication, doing something unexpected, building relationships. It's not about the heart-shaped tub, right? It's not about the free breakfast necessarily. That's second. First is, how does this experience impact me? And do I feel like you're concerned about and want to build a relationship because I know you can meet my needs beyond um, just giving me things? Fitness center, I want to have improved health. I want to feel better about myself. I want to be stronger. I want to reduce my cholesterol. I don't know because you all are different. If I asked every one of you right now, what do you seek out of an experience at a fitness center? We would get five different answers. And then slowly all of you would fit into one of those, you know, kind of answers when we got around the table. We might not have 18 different answers or 50 different answers, but we will have more than one. You all don't go to the fitness center uh, for the same reason. And, and if you just even look around with your family or people you live with, you know those answers would be different too. And then finally, the youth camp might be socialization, spiritual reflection. You might want to actually learn some skills, right? Whether it's outdoor skills or otherwise. So when we think about this chapter on a very simple level, you know, we, we naturally provide a bunch of stuff, a bunch of features, but really we're providing that stuff for a bigger reason. But we tend not to communicate that bigger reason. And it goes back to the why. Why are we in this business to begin with? Why are you in this business to begin with? You could have picked a lot of other things to major in and do for a professional career that would have made you a heck of a lot more money and probably had a better uh, work-life balance on some level because your hours would have been 
um, less and not 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, right? We are in this business because we are passionate about our whys. I know you are. I've been, I've been teaching in this area enough to know we attract a student and students study this field because they're passionate about serving people, employees, volunteers, donors, guests, and making a difference in their life. But we don't communicate that well and we don't deliver that necessarily well, even though I know your why is right. So somehow we've got to get back to that. I mentioned this example in chapter one and I, I keep this picture because it is about the experience and this is what reminds me. Remember the ferry boat story in chapter one. Three ferry boats all kind of doing it the same way, different products or feature differences. The difference is when they created an experience, it worked. People wanted to be served. They wanted to learn. They wanted something unique, right? They didn't want to get there the fastest way. They wanted an enriching experience. And this is a picture of the Mackinac Bridge. And this was a recent post on their, on their Facebook page, on Shepler's Facebook page that said, thanks for the trip under the Mighty Mac this weekend. Very cool. That's reaching people in a, in a mem memorable kind of way. So remember the bridge. Think about under the bridge. Still one of my absolutely favorite marketing moments. And it wasn't telling anybody about the bridge. That wasn't my favorite part. It was figuring out what was the why for Shepler's. What was the unique experiences they could provide. Have a competitive advantage. And then the communication of this became relatively easy. So as we think about this chapter, what I want to remind you is the experience is really everything in our industry. And if we start with a very poor experience, it's going to cause marketers who actually reach out to communicate lots of challenges. But if our experience is solid, if we've thought about this in terms of other concepts, what motivates people, what kind of theories we can rely on to help grow and move into 21st century beyond 21st century marketing, but we've got to get to the experience level and we've got to have a mutual, engaged, really great understanding of what people need and want. So chapter two to me is fairly quick because I really talk about it more in chapter three um, in terms of those five phases because they're that critical. Have a great day and thanks for um, uh, thinking about the experience at the organizations you work for and our entire industry.